Hi, it's Carly McAvoy. I want to talk about a sampling distribution model for a proportion. When we're going to use this, we have to make a few assumptions. One is that the individuals in the sample must be independent. So they can't be connected to each other. Or you're choosing them one and then you're choosing them another one or the first one affects the second one. They have to be independent. If you have less than 10% of the people in the population or the things in the population, you can assume independence. The second assumption is that they are chosen randomly. And third, n times p has to be greater than or equal to 10 and n times q has to be greater than or equal to 10, meaning that you have to have at least 10 successes and 10 failures as you carry out the procedure. Here's an example. A marketing firm found that 72% of families eat out at restaurants more than 25 times a year. Assume the population proportion is 0.72 and a simple random sample of 53 households is selected from the population. What's the probability that A, the sample proportion of households eating out more than 25 times a year is between 0.65 and 0.75, B, that that sample proportion of people is more uh, is least 70 or 0 0.70 and the sample proportion is at most 0 0.68. So there's three different things we're looking at. Before we start, we should ask ourselves, did we meet the conditions listed above? Are they independent? Well, if you choose one household, that shouldn't affect another household. So yes, we can say they're independent. Secondly, is it random? Well, it said in there it was a simple random sample, so we can assume that it is random. And then is n times p and n times q greater than or equal to 10? If you take 0.72 times 53, then that would give you your np. Find q by taking 1 minus 0.72, so that's going to be 0.28. Multiply that times 53, you also get more than 10, so we've met on those and then secondly, we need to determine what is the mean and standard deviation of our sampling distribution we're calling p hat. The mean of the sampling distribution is given as just p. So what they give you as a probability is your mean. In this case, that was given as 0 0.72. The standard deviation of our population uh, sample of our proportion is uh, given by the square root of pq over n. P was given as 0.72, Q is always 1 minus P, in this case 0.28, and our N was given as 53, and if I plug that in, then I get 0 0.6717. Okay, so now I'm wondering um, to answer those questions now that I have met those things. You can enter the values into GeoGebra or any other online calculator. I'm gonna use GeoGebra in a minute. I'm gonna show you the answers first, and then we'll go find those on GeoGebra. The first one says that the sample proportion is between 0.65 and 0.75. So we're looking at uh, a proportion that looks like this, a statement that looks like this. It's between these two, and this is the answer we're gonna get on GeoGebra in a minute. The second one says that it's at least 0.7. What does at least mean? Does it mean less than or greater than? Well, think about it. If you want to get into a bar, you have to be at least 21. And so that means you could be 21 or greater, not 21 or less. So always think about that in some terms of something that you would make sense to you. So we're looking at greater than or equal to for at least. And the third one asks, um, what is it at most? And at most means that the most you can be is something like if you're talking about a bowling score, the most you can get is 300 and you can get less than that. So when we're talking about at most, we're actually talking about a less than or equal to. So those are the three values that we want to go find. I'm going to show you how to do that on GeoGebra. You can be using whatever you want. On GeoGebra.org, I would click on GeoGebra Classic and then click on Probability. And now I want to enter... Um, move this over a little bit. I want to enter my mean that I was given. Remember, we just used the proportion as given, which was 0.72. I want to enter that standard deviation that I found by the square root of NP over or PQ over N, and that was 0 0.0617. Uh, and then the first one said find the probability that it's between these two values. So we would put in, we'd want to use this this button right here for the between, that interval in between. So that'd be 0 0.65 up to um, 0 0.75, and that's how we get the 55.83%. Uh, and you can see this is what it is. So what they found was that 
72 percent of this of the families ate out more than that so if we're looking at how many fell between 65 and 75 you can see a great deal of them did 0.72 being that center mean the second one we ask was what at least 0.7 at least we said is greater than and so we want to put this in here we want to put 0.7 and that's going to show us that it was 0.6278. So a lot of a lot of people fell into this range of eating out 70% or more, a lot of families. And finally, what if we were talking about less than um, point, what was the number, 0.68, 68%. Well, you can see that that's only 25.84% of the population that's doing that because our average was 72. So we, if we're talking about people that eat out less than that, 68% um, or below, that is looking pretty small, and, and so we're talking about that. So we're going back into our document and seeing that those were the values that we found. I showed you how to find them and also find them on your calculator or on Desmos or whatever you want to do, but just understand how you're finding those. All right, have a fantastic day.